All right, g'day guys, welcome back to True Footy is Just the Tips. I'm joined once again by young Druzy, who you may recognize from the Druzy channel, where we also do our weekly roundup show, the Drew Footy Show. So go check out Druzy's channel. We uh, yeah, pretty much just wrap the last round, give our opinions on that. Matthew Rao did an ACL, la da 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 da. Oh, rap with a W. Yeah. Like Christmas. So if you tuned into last week's episode of Just The Tips, you would have seen that Druzy scored a very impressive 7 out of 9 considering I had a week of hell with the footy tips. I scored a paltry 4. I backed myself on a few 50-50s that did not pay off and I put myself behind the 8-ball Drews. That's a real chicken of a prediction week. Yeah, there wasn't it. Poultry. Nah, oh. No, come on. No one. No, no dangers. Okay. Um, yeah, slapped you about, eh? Mm. It's pretty embarrassing. And then the tipping... Come on, man. So I'm sitting on four, you're sitting on seven, and we're going to introduce a little segment each week as well, Dad Watch, because my dad (laughs) gives me so much shit, because I think he came fourth in the footy tipping for True Footy last year, um, and he smugly is just reminding me how much he is better at footy tipping, and I know he watches his show, so he gets a shout out, and we're going to keep Dad Watch on on the go at the moment. So he he tips six, so he's ahead by two, um, and we can track throughout the year how much better my dad is at footy tips. I've got his number this week though, but you know, we'll see next week. Keep an eye out for Dad Watch every week on just the tips Ew. <laughs> but of course there were three tippers this week who couldn't be divided at the top of the table uh, we had three people tip the perfect margin of, uh, of zero of course to go with seven correct tips so shout out to Jay's back Jacko Goose 19 or Yako Goose I'm not too sure how to pronounce that depending. Jacko uh, Jacko um, Daniel Devlin as well also got uh, seven with the margin of zero so fantastic tipping I'm pretty sure nobody would have got the two they got wrong which would have been Geelong and Sydney uh, in their respective games and we'll shout out as well the fantasy winner as well because we've got the fantasy comp as well and you can still join that um, if you want it's just an open comp with the code I think it's in the description but Daniel Saunders who I, was he Daniel Saunders the one who commented a on the oh, Drew yes. Footy Show. I think it is. So shout out Daniel. Uh, scored an impressive 2014. Uh, I think I scored about 1685, which is absolutely terrible. Um, he should change his name to Jack Ross because he was a super sub this weekend. But in today's video, of course, we're going to kick on with round two and our predictions as well. Before we get into that, make sure you go check out our sponsors for today's video, manscaped.com. If you go to their website, you can get 20% off their male grooming products, which is elite. Uh, the lawnmower 3.0 has a 90 minute battery runtime um, and has a little light and you can use it in the shower. It's waterproof as well. I thoroughly recommend this product and they've been supporting us for a while now. So true footy 20, all caps, one word, 20% off and free shipping. So we'll crack into the first game of the round, which is Carlton and Collingwood and potentially we're going to see 75,000 people. I don't know how realistic that is. Mm. By the time this video comes out, we'll have news ruling that completely obsolete. So <laughs> we'll, we'll find out either way. But um, 75% uh, capacity is huge for a huge rivalry game. We know the Blues kept pace with Richmond last week for three quarters. And then mm. Richmond sort of overran them as a more experienced and, for, frankly, a champion side. And by contrast, I think the Pies were really disappointing. I backed them in last week against the Dogs. I thought it was going to be an evenly matched contest. I backed in Collingwood to um, defy the haters as such. But really disappointing game to be honest and mm. they only kick seven goals so scoring power still an issue there between Carlton and Collingwood though Drews what are your instincts uh, for this game it's a hard one uh, Collingwood obviously had as you said had a very disappointing result last week and Carlton really took it to the premiers I was very impressed with Carlton's performance last week so going off form you'd probably say Carlton but I think the safe tip would be Collingwood I'll tip this week I'll go Collingwood but I wouldn't be surprised if Carlton won this is one that could go either way uh, I'll say Collingwood by 17 points. Interesting. That would be a big result, a big uh, comeback for them after, yeah, like I said, really poor first round. I still think Collingwood's 22 should be playing better than it is. I yeah. mean, you take out Trelaw and Stevenson, it's still a good team. Brody Grundy's completely out of form as well. Uh, normally beats the crap out of Tim English, but, you know, it didn't really have a great game. So I'm going to actually say... I'm going to go against the yeah. Pies, to oh. be honest. Um, I think Carlton just looked a lot better. So if they bring the same, you know, um, attacking flair to their mm. game, I thought Adam Saad was really, really good recruit for them in round one. I'm going to tip the Blues to win by 15 points. Response needed from the Magpies here, though. Their season could be in hot water if yeah. they lose to the Dogs and Carlton. Speaking of hot water, it's absolute bath time at GMHBA Stadium this week. We had two teams who had really disappointing upsets to the Swans and Crows, respectively. Um, and, you know, the reality is one of these teams is likely to go 0-2, barring a draw as well. Geelong, uh, obviously shell-shocked by a Crow side that played 
really good football, um, and Taylor Walker had a day out and was probably the difference between the two sides. They didn't really play terribly, uh, but neither did the Lions as well. Also mm. came up against a side that played out of their skins, and you know a lot of the youngsters bullied Brisbane, despite you know like a, a really experienced Brisbane side with the aid of Joe Danaher as well. Bar be going bubble bubble at GMHVA <laughs> this week with the hot water that we've got running through GMHVA. Geelong's going to be flooded with the heat because Geelong can't go 0-2, simply, with the talent they have on their list. They are missing Jeremy Cameron. I wonder how much of their preseason have gone into, like, I don't know, their forward structure around it. In the first half of that game on the weekend, they didn't have a lot going forward. They sort of come into the game eventually, um, but they, they can't start slow against Brisbane again because, yeah, they played probably a better second half than Adelaide did, but you can't start that slow. Yeah, you're right. Maybe they did plan for a Jeremy Cameron uh, full forward line, but um, to be honest, I think Adelaide just outhunted them and moved the ball so well that it was hard for them to defend. Danger is likely to miss this game. It's probably going to cop a couple of weeks. Um, with that in mind, who are you backing for this week? Ah, uh, yeah, I think Geelong. I think Geelong were probably more impressive than Brisbane because Brisbane sort of rolled over towards the end of that game, it looked like. They were quite demoralised. Geelong, well, both teams need to bounce back, but I think Geelong are the more likely at home. Very hard to beat at GMHBA. I'll go Geelong by 24 points. Yeah, nice one. I'm similarly going to back in Geelong, I think mostly because of the GMHBA factor. I know Geelong lost to Carlton there last year, but they're still really, really hard to beat there. And I think in terms of matchups, Geelong generally batter Brisbane, as we saw mm. in the prelims. So... I'm going to say Geelong win this, although if they don't win this, I'd be really, really concerned for their season. Brisbane, by contrast, this is probably a game they're always going to bank on losing, to be honest. Could it be another case of the, the grand final loser having a stinking season? You'd think not with Geelong. Surely not. Yeah, I don't know if it'll go that far, but uh, time we'll will see. tell. So that brings us to the third game of the round, which is the two teams that knocked off Geelong and Brisbane. Sydney and Adelaide are poetically playing each other at the SCG this week. Like we touched on with Sydney, um, had some really good uh, output from some youngsters, Errol Golden, I presume, is going to win the Rising Star. Hasn't been announced yet, uh, but he'll probably get the nomination. And then Logan McDonald, equally, could be the Rising Star nomination this week. Both bagged three goals and were close to their best for their club. Um, and then the Crows as well, like we touched on as well. Really good ball movement, really hunted the footy. A lot of youngsters starting to play pretty good football as well, but none more so than Taylor Walker, who mm. I don't think I've seen him play a game like that for like four years. He's hopped back into his hot form that he used to deliver on a weekly basis. Absolutely. Which of these two sides between Sydney and Adelaide? Adelaide, do you think are stronger at the moment? I mean, Adelaide just put in one of the best performances they've done in years. So mm. on form, or oh, Sydney had a great game as well. This is a real tough one. Top of the table clash, who would have thought? <laughs> yeah. Um, one of these teams is going to go 2-0. Oh, Sydney at home, great young talent. Heaney really impressed us last week. Roll Batum also had a good game. Oh, this is really hard. It is hard. This is really hard. I'll go Sydney just for the for the home ground advantage and because Logan McDonald is my ideal person I would want to be if I wasn't myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think back to round one of last year, uh, pre the COVID um, sort of shutdown of the season, Sydney and Adelaide played an absolutely cracking game in mm. Adelaide and uh, Sydney won that by three points. I could see it being a similar really, really good game as well. I think Sydney are a little bit more talented, but if yeah. Adelaide play with that same gusto, they could easily win. I'll back in Sydney to win by 18 points. Next up, we've got Port Adelaide hosting Essendon at Adelaide Oval. And Port were pretty much the only beneficiary of a one-sided win this whole round. I thought mm. it was a really even round. And even though North sort of took it up to them early, um, we saw Port Adelaide pull away like the experienced, classy side that they are. Four skin. No. By contrast, we live-streamed, of course, the Essendon-Hawthorne game, and while Essendon looked promising in patches, they had a pretty typical Essendon performance by rolling over to concede a 39-point uh, lead and eventually lose the game by one point to a side in Hawthorne who played well, but mm. also, you know, probably not going to climb out of the bottom six at the moment, I think, but it is a very even competition. Port Adelaide-Essendon, is this a one-sided matchup? Well, Essendon looked really good in patches. I think Jai Caldwell has been a massive addition to that midfield. Dylan Chill sort of went quiet in the second half of the game last week if they can play four quarters i can see them beating port adelaide minor premiers last year on top of the table again smacked about north melbourne at home this shouldn't be an issue for them if they're a legitimate top four side uh i'll tip port adelaide by 32 points like you said port adelaide led the ladder at every round last year which is incredible and uh they've done it again they're still top yeah. of the ladder and i expect that will stay the same i think they're gonna have a 37 point win this week over the bombers next up we've got st kilda and melbourne and this is a quite a good uh one of the better matchups i think for this round um in terms of being relatively even match evenly matched both sides will be think fancying themselves as top eight saints mm. potentially looking at top four um particularly after their win in sydney which i uh said on your video on drew footy on the drew footy show i think it's one of the more significant wins of that round 
round because it was a real 50-50 battle. Both sides had a few injuries as well, but to win in a hard, wet slog, which doesn't suit their style, um, to get four points away from home, really good for St Kilda, really, really strong performance. And then uh, Melbourne sort of did what they needed to do. Again, hit by injuries, as were Fremantle, uh, but Melbourne are clearly the classier side mm. between the two. They're going to obviously get some forward line talent over the coming weeks, but they won't have it this week. Were you convinced by the D's against Freo when they uh, when they played on the live stream? I didn't think they were too good. Hey, I think you saw glimpses of that back line, how good they were. Definitely a step up from last season and obviously 2019. I think they're still gelling as a side. But St Kilda have won a final last year. Big win away to GWS last week. I think it's going to take a little bit more time for Melbourne to really show us what they're capable of. I'll tip St Kilda to win this one. Could see it going either way though, but I'll tip the Saints by... 21 point. Yeah, I feel similarly. I think fully fit, Melbourne's talent is just about there with St. Kilda. Yeah. I think they, you know, their issue's not been talent. It's been about application and, you know, getting their players fit. Um, that being said, with their injuries, St. Kilda is clearly a better side um, mm-hmm. and, you know, in really good form. Doesn't look like they've slowed down from last year. I'm very confident the Saints will win this and I'll say they'll win by four goals, 24 points. Nice. Next up, I can see this one filling out the stadium metric on stadium. Gold Coast are hosting North Melbourne <laughs> over in Queensland. Um, probably the two smallest supporter base is in the league I'm not too sure um, sorry to Probably. roast both clubs before getting into it we'll start with the Gold Coast had a typical performance or at least the performance that I would expect from them really took it up to the Eagles their talent was on show really good performance so much young talent on their list uh, but ultimately couldn't run with a very experienced side in the Eagles and it was a 35 degree day as well so uh, couldn't quite run it out but could have easily won the game as well um, North took it up to Port for about a quarter and then again much more experienced side ran it out uh, ended up being the most one-sided game of the round although Jaden Stevenson looked really really good in his mm-hmm first outing can you see the Suns dropping this game at all no nah, I think Gold Coast are quite much more solid than than the Ruse mm. I don't really know how much input you want me to put into this stinkathon. <laughs> um, I think Gold Coast will win quite easily but it was good to see Jaden Stevenson back to his best for the Ruse but I think yeah they're going to be pretty average to watch this season so, yeah. yeah I'll just go Gold Coast by fucking 37 points sounds like North want to turn Stevenson into a full time midfielder he was drafted as sort of an inside outside mid uh, yeah. predominantly outside so if he's uh, I think he's mid priced on the AFL Fantasy and I'm definitely going to trade him in this week because you can get him as a forward um, he finds the ball so uh, um, yeah, but anyway, in terms of this game, the talent I think is just up here. Gold Coast mm-hmm. are starting to show that they'll they'll be a bit hungry as well because you know they um, didn't get the four points and arguably they were you know the better side for two out of four quarters and um, they didn't get dinner because they had to get on the plane straight away to the Gold Coast mm, to get home. Seriously hungry, yeah. so please there. <laughs> just want some spaghetti in a can or something, <laughs> please, just something. Yeah, personally, I'll be shocked if the Suns don't win this. I'm going to say they'll win this by 33 points. Next up, we've got Hawthorne versus Richmond at the MCG. Another potentially big crowd if uh, Melbourne sort of relaxed their COVID restrictions. We saw Hawthorne pull off a miraculous comeback, 39 points, uh, which would be the biggest comeback in a few years, I'd imagine. Uh, yeah. were shortened quarters last year, but a bit of momentum going into this game, and they uh, managed to beat Essendon, who you know, typically patchy, but again, we saw some good talent uh, coming through with Hawthorne um, in particular. I think Will Day, that, I wouldn't mm. be surprised if that's his best performance at AFL level. He was yep. controlling the game in the back half. Um, Tyler Brockman bobbed up as well, looked really promising. And then we talked about Richmond before, sort of staved off a really young up-and-coming Carlton side and just ran it out with more experience. And it took Dusty Martin playing, you know, a top-level game mm-hmm. um, for them to ultimately win the game. Hawks knocked them off in this fixture last year, yes. early last year when Richmond was down and out, although Richmond does look in a bit better form than then. Any chance this happens again? Yeah, I think so. I was quite impressed by Hawthorne's performance last week. O'Brien with the game-winning goal last year. Morrison was quite impressive as well. They've got a lot of talent still, Hawthorne. I wouldn't write them off, um, but in this game... You'd probably back the Premiers, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking Richmond don't look too vulnerable like they did yeah. last year. I think there's upset stank about this game. I think Hawthorne do lift themselves for big games sometimes, yeah. particularly against uh, the reigning Premiers. But I still think it could either that that could happen or Richmond could belt them. So I'm going to tip Richmond by 39 points. I don't like that, but I'll go Richmond by 20 points. The second last game of the round is potentially the most evenly matched, or perhaps I'm just saying that with blue and gold goggles on, uh, but the Bulldogs are hosting my boys, the Eagles, at Marvel Stadium. A lot of you talked about the Dogs midfield over this offseason. Um, there was maybe question marks, especially on this channel, how that mix would work. Um, as we saw, Trelaw didn't really impact as much as the other guys, but you look at Bont, you look at McRae, and none were better than Bailey Smith taking home the medal uh, for two goals and like 31 possessions. That midfield setup is really, really Didn't even scary. mention Dunkley either, who yeah. come off the bench. That's true. Yeah, Criminal. exactly. Only question mark on the dogs was the scoring power. There's something else. Have they been vaccinated? Have they been fleet and wormed? 
Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a good one. Obviously, the dog's scoring power has been a question mark for him, and uh, to only kick 10 goals themselves, despite restricting the pies to seven, um, that's still a question mark for me, and the Eagles' defence um, generally is pretty good. Mm. Um, and the Eagles obviously overcame a Gold Coast side that was super talented. I don't think that we saw the Eagles at top flight. That we had flashes, and there was also a lot of poor ball use, and I think maybe they're just a little bit underprepared for the season, maybe yeah. just because um, it was almost at times like they couldn't get out of pre-season mode not to disrespect yeah. Gold Coast it just looked like a side that was a little bit rusty so Drew this is a very evenly matched game who do you think is the stronger team out of these two West Coast really yep no I think just the experience will overcome it obviously close game last year Bulldogs won by less than a goal wasn't it yeah really it was close like a couple points even yeah. yeah I reckon West Coast bounce back they're going in the underdogs to the dogs but I reckon West Coast the dogs will win 14 points. I can see the Dogs midfield absolutely tearing the Eagles apart. Because, really? Yeah, the Eagles midfield is absolutely shit house, to be honest. And Shui and Yo out um, makes it even harder. Even with Nat Nui, you know, playing a pretty influential game at times, mm. Gold Coast absolutely tore him up in the midfield. It was really disappointing. That being said, forward and back, I think the Eagles have him well and truly covered. So it really depends how much to what extent, at least, the Dogs sort of use their midfield yeah. dominance. This could embarrass me. I like to think I don't tip the Eagles like unfairly too often but I'm actually going to back my boys in here I think they're going to upset to some extent the dogs by 11 points I thought Tim Kelly looked pretty solid yesterday at, at times he was good but it, it's individually there's a couple of good players like Sheed probably got three votes okay. 36 34 possessions mm -hmm. um, but just the in terms of our contested ball Gold Coast, was run, Gold Coast was running it out of the midfield and we're coming up against probably the most talented midfield group in the comp so it's going to be icky final game of the round is your boys Drews um, Fremantle wow. versus GWS set up the stadium two teams that lost last week mm. uh, we did live stream the Demon game you were pretty uh, up and about in a negative way you were, <laughs> you were absolutely filthy I don't think it was too bad a performance uh, from Fremantle but obviously with Walters out and a team that doesn't have much scoring power anyway um, you could really see that going into the 450 there was like no end product and ultimately that was the difference between the two teams because uh, the midfield stuff was actually pretty solid from Fremantle's perspective GWS on the other hand took on a finals quality opponent at home in the wet um, some would say probably not a strong starting lineup at St Kilda, but they made an absolute game of it, um, albeit in conditions that didn't really suit St Kilda. Similar to Fremantle, I think GWS are lacking uh, tall forward talent at the moment. How Hogan's not available. Um, oh no, yeah. <laughs> rats! Yeah, good point. Even with Hogan, thank God he's not playing. Fucking hell, I was well scared that he was going to kick a bag on us. Okay, so with Hogan in, admittedly, GWS's forward line isn't that threatening as well. Obviously, no Jeremy Cameron this year. GWS did a business on us though last year. I think Jeremy Cameron did play, but uh, Harry Himmelberg and who's that other tall forward that they have that we spoke about? Riccardi. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think he kicked three or four on us last year. Mm. Um, so I am scared of their forward line, especially with Alex Pierce out. Again, that doesn't make matters any better for the Dockers. I described Dockers' performance last week as as solid as diarrhea. I think that's a good way of putting it. Sure. Um, <laughs> disjointed forward line, you know, couldn't find the way out of a wet paper bag at times. <laughs> um, midfield looked good. Defence, pretty average. Um, this could, yeah, go either way, but... I'm going with a pessimistic option here. And I just don't see us kicking enough goals, unfortunately. So I'm going to tip GWS by 27 points. Ooh. And that will not make me happy at all. This one's generally tough for me to tip, to be honest, because I do feel uh, a little bit that with a home Perth crowd, if Fremantle are up and about early, they could easily shock the Giants here. But I think ultimately, I'm more worried about Fremantle's lack of goals than I am for GWS. They've got some yeah. more of the natural goal kickers like Toby Green inside as well, uh, in addition to the guys that you mentioned. Um, whereas Fremantle really, really struggled without someone like a Walters and Tab and I kicked a couple of junk time goals but ultimately yeah just didn't really cut it so I'm going to agree with you I'm going to say the Giants win by 17. Well that is the end of round two of just the tips before we go we will take you through Drewsy's multi which is going to be doing every week so how did last week to go not well? Uh, yeah not well I uh, tipped Frio in the multi which wasn't good um, but yeah failed by yeah three legs so yeah yeah not great. So um, why do you get pants to fit? We've gone with Collingwood beating Carlton, Geelong beating Brisbane, Sydney beating Adelaide, Port beating Essendon, St Kilda beating Melbourne, Gold Coast beating North Melbourne, Hawthorne losing to Richmond, and uh, West Coast beating the Bulldogs with GWS beating the Dockers paying $54. All right, thanks guys. That concludes another week of Just The Tips. Uh, make sure you go check out the sponsor of today's video, manscaped.com, for all your ball shaving needs. Go check out Drewzy's channel um, for all his, all his content and also our regular footy show called The Drew Footy Show. And we hope to see you on the battlefield that is ESPN Footy Tips. Catch ya.